this meeting for order. Uh, at this time, I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. Who's going to take notes here? Bob? Okay, motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Approval of the minutes. So Second. moved. Motion made. Second. Second by Jeremy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we have a few public hearings. Uh, the first one we're going to cover is uh, to vacate public right away of legal description as mentioned. I'll let uh, that be read by who's going to present it over there. And this public hearing starts at 631. All right, we've got a request from the Franciscan Sisters of Little Falls to vacate the right-of-way that was uh, shown in Richardson Edition. Richardson Edition was originally applied in 1896, I want to say it was, and then block, the block A, B, C, and D were vacated in 1916. So as you can see, as you can see, A, B, C, and D, the blocks were vacated, um, but the right-of-way was still left to the, to the city. Um, since then, in 1916, there was a judgment that vacated what you see in red here in terms of the right-of-way, but we still have what's shown in blue, which would be the alleys, and then uh, 12th Avenue and 10th Avenue up on the north here that would be remaining in terms of the, the right-of-way. So tonight we're asking for uh, the Planning Commission to vacate that portion of Richardson Edition that has not been vacated already, except the little bit that's over here on the uh, east end in front of lots one through five where 4th Street right away takes uh, and uses that portion. Of it. So everything in Richardson, with the exception of those that 4th Street currently uses, would be looking at uh, vacating that section. That's all owned by the Franciscans, correct? That's all owned by the Franciscan Sisters, correct. And has been basically forever. It has been forever, yeah. Okay. I mean, is there any use to uh, public users for that? Any reason to be on that? I'll uh, direct the attention toward the audience then. Uh, we'll have a discussion here in a little bit once we close it. Anyone uh, out there want to speak for or against this? Can we ask some questions about sure. it? Can you come up to the podium, please, and give your name and address? <coughs> Lois Machi, 13834 on 79th Street. Um, where is it located in proportion to where the cemetery is out there and where the gardens are, etc.? The cemetery. The cemetery is located right over in this area. The gardens are over in here on the far left. St. Otto's is right up, <laughs> right up here. Um, the ball fields are over here, and right across the road from the ball fields would be what was known as Richardson Edition. Okay, so actually the, the buildings, the cemetery, the gardens, all of that is to the west. To the west yep. of that. Here's the St. Francis, the uh, Franciscan Sisters, um, and then the gardens are south of that, and then they have their, their cemetery down. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? said that they were um, doing some title work on their property and this came up as area that was uh, not vacated. Beyond that, that's all I know. 
Is that also where the home is located? That St. Camillus? Kind of no, not that. It's a, it's a little house that's kind of by itself in the woods. That I don't know. I believe St. Camillus is right over in here. So not the group home. Beyond that, um, you might be thinking of this house over here. No, this is, residence this is all, all wooded back in there. I know it's wooded, but there's a home in there. Okay. That I don't know. Might have been just a garden storage area for... No, oh, there's an actual home. Is it? Yeah. I, I think it's yellow. Somewhere in there. So I was just wondering where that is on that plot there. I know it doesn't have road access. Okay. And I think, I don't know what it was used for, maybe some type of prayer or meeting house or something. I don't, I don't know, but I know there's a home here. Go down with it. I think you can see it right there, right above that, right below that orange line. Isn't that house right there? Up down at the intersection with the blue line to the west there. Isn't there a house right there? Up at the blue line? Right. Hey, there, there ain't no road into it, so. Is there some more woods? Is this still convent property here? This is convent property, but this is out of the city limits. City limits right. end right here, but this is still owned by the sisters. Right. Maybe it's in that big woods area. I don't know. There is a driveway back here. I mean, we can see that. But it I don't goes know. back to what's in the northeast end. So they just want to. They said they were trying to clean up their title. Yeah. And the city did have access back in there in some of the. The blue was the street, she said. It could have been. The blue is right away that was dedicated in 1896, I believe, the year was when Richardson Additional provided. So maybe they were going to use it for something in the same. Most likely, yeah. Okay, just was curious. Thanks. Yep. Anyone else? Hearing none at this time, we're going to close the public hearing. And uh, we'll open up to discussion with the board. Mr. Chairman, I would move for approval of the request to vacate as requested. I'll second. Motion made. Seconded. Any discussion? <laughs> well, you can just look at the red. The red blocks up all the blue, so it's it going to make no sense to keep the blue if you got no access to it through the red. Yeah. It's already been vacated, so it's kind of. Well, why would you keep the access if we got no access to the access that we have? Right. And the land to the south isn't in the city, so it's not like uh, you're going to be responsible for carrying utilities through there. Or I could see a couple of them could help in the future, but it's not city land. Yeah, we, the city, as far as I'm concerned, and for utilities and stuff, we wouldn't have a, a need for any of that, that area. If for some reason that plan was platted in the future, if the consistency is still so often, I would need to plat it in that kind of thing. Right. Because there's no plat right now, it's just the Basically, it's meets and bounds. Meets and bounds, right. Once they vacated Richardson Edition, it all went back to meets and bounds. Uh, and that's what it's currently described as. So the developer and developer required to buy it? Right. To put roads in at that time? Correct. Take five cents to buy it? Or how are you doing? It makes it more sellable, too. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, so we have another public hearing. It's on an ordinance amendment to chapter 11. Uh, I call this public hearing order at 639. You can read us the particulars and we'll go through it then. Okay. 
Nick. Um, this is uh, in follow up to our meeting last month, uh, actually, the last couple of months where we've been discussing this uh, ordinance that would refer to uh, storage pods. And um, we don't, again, we don't, just as background, uh, Mr. Essie is a new member, we, we don't have any very clear ordinances right now about how to handle these in the ordinance. So the full intent here is to try to clarify that action one way or the other. So we spent a couple months going over a couple different drafts and changing things. Uh, this is the result of that. So again, uh, if you want, I can go through line by line or we can just deal with it. And we're supposed to do that until we just have time. So I know there's at least a couple now that have that come through the people. So. I don't see any reason for me to go for a fight, but I'll go sit down there and grab my questions all this. Okay. Uh, you pretty much gave us all the information. At this time, I'd uh, put it out to the public. Does anyone wish to speak for or against this? <coughs> I have a question. Census we had at our prior meeting. Right. It's intended to be so. Yeah, we. <laughs> I can't say that I know what's not in there. <laughs> <laughs> now, if this recommendation goes, we okay it, and it goes before the council, how long after that is it considered uh, to be enacted upon? As far as how long would it before it takes effect? It takes effect, yeah. Currently, there's two readings, and then seven days after the approval by the council is when it would take effect. Okay. Um, would there be time? There isn't time to get a 
ordinance in place by then as far as adjusting a sign ordinance because we are going to stick it in that area. Uh, I'm just trying to think this through. Are we being premature right now by pushing it through now or should it come after the sign ordinance adjustment? Um, I, I guess my thought is it's two separate matters. If you wanted to, you could certainly wait. I mean, we haven't had an ordinance for some time now. Not going to be in the world to wait for the I guess that's something we'll have to discuss tonight. The thing is, right now they're allowed to put them wherever, whenever, for however long they want. Just is cutting them back, saying that they can't until we. There's no regulations on them right now. If you got to sign on them or not, they're sitting there. So we ain't running around chasing them all over town now. Why won't we enact and get this portion covered and Makes sense. go through our sign ordinance and? Let's do step one, out. and then step two will come. So we're, we're not regulating them now. So why would we? We don't regulate any of our other signs and any of our other ordinances. It's all in the sign orders. Why would you slap something in the middle of this one? Like you said, I think it, it'd be a lot less confusing if it's in the sign orders rather than here because then you'd be hunting in five different places to see if you're compliant with it. We're going through our code book to get it up to date so everything ain't scattered in 50 different places. Why would we start over again? Don, what's your opinion? <laughs> Not uh, actually, I haven't gotten a chance to read this ordinance yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been using it for a little while. So uh, I'd say you're on the right track in doing your due diligence and moving this through. And uh, I'm with Jeremy that if it's, if it's something that isn't regulated right now, um, it's not going to change that you enacted this regulation and then modified something at a later time. But if it you know, is, is impacted by so in the meantime, if somebody issues a complaint against it because there's a sign advertising and it's considered an off-premise sign, um, you'll just have to act upon it as if it's somebody in violation of being off-premise. Well, so, yeah, I, we, we have received uh, one or two of these complaints about this. Starting to Whatever we do, just as long as there's no favoritism and it shows that we are trying to take care of this in a timely manner. Well, and keep in mind that this ordinance is more restricted than what we currently have. That's right. So uh, by putting this in place, it, it's more restricted than what we would have today. So we're, we're going the right direction. I believe one of the reasons for us looking at this was to uh, be ahead of having uh, these uh, steel storage bins becoming permanent structures on res particularly residential properties. So I hate the word proactive, but we were trying to be a step ahead of that happening. Uh, I believe, from my opinion, that I believe that the, the ordinance is really pretty simple. You know, compared to some of our other ordinances, Page and a half, boys yeah. and girls. <laughs> uh, it's it's pretty simple. So uh, and I think it was meant to keep simple at this point, because uh, only time will tell how how this is going to be impacted and we can address those issues should they arise, and they may not arise. Well, I've seen thing on TV this morning where they're painting gold, blasting them all over the world and go in and do a half or 20 minute conference with some stranger across the world, camera to camera, and you come pen pals through these storage containers and pop in paint and gold and you can sign up for your 20 minute interview across the world and have a pen pal. So I got five or six of them across the United States and they're growing to 10,000 they said by the 10 years. There's time for that to happen yeah. here before this gets passed. Well, one for every million people in the world they want to have. So. <laughs> well, I think it's coming in a timely manner because uh, there was one sitting on the street. Uh, somebody must have moved it in front of their house, but they put it on the street. Mm -hmm. And you probably know where it was. And, uh, 
And they, they got it out of there quick, but it could have been an issue if it would have sat there, especially since we shouldn't park for more than 24 hours, anything around. And we're getting into snow season, too. And it's even like uh, on the public street when we're putting these uh, roll-offs and you're sitting there taking up parking spots and a lot of times we're, we're trying for parking and we have that sitting there. Uh, it's another issue, but anyway, so I think this is timely. Either a hazard at night or a dog out dark sometimes. You don't see that's another area. Yeah, that's been an issue for Anyone else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, one more ordinance. We call this one to order at 650. It's uh, amendment to chapter 11, land use regulations. Who's going to handle this one? Is that you, Ben? Yep, this one's okay. Ben. Um, so this one, again, we talked about this last month at the meeting. Uh, this relates to bed and breakfast that have additional food service. And then it also is going to relate, if it's passed, to uh, home occupations. So uh, the, the purpose of this one is to address what kind of off-street parking or on-street parking could be allowed to serve the needs of these two kinds of businesses. So currently at this point, the current ordinance would require a bed and breakfast that uh, is going to have, well, let me start this way. If the bed, the bed and breakfast needs to have off-street parking right now for enough to accommodate the number of rooms that they have, room like that. and that is not going to change under this proposal. Still need not to be present for that purpose. Uh, what it would change is that right now the current ordinance says if you're going to have a bed and breakfast that also has uh, the capability to do tea parties or things that are open to guests that come by appointment, um, they need to have additional option parking. This proposed ordinance would say in certain cases if you can meet uh, the requirements of what's drafted here, uh, you can use on street parking spaces. The area that's in red on the screen that's the proposed change. You could use on street parking spaces to meet the parking needs of that so additional food service. The same would apply for home occupations. Um, currently, the ordinance isn't real clear about what's required for parking in those situations. This would say, well, what it does say is that you can't have more than three parking spaces. The need for three parking spaces created by the home occupation. Not, it's, it's intended to not be something that's going to generate a lot of traffic and a lot of parking. Uh, but what this is going to clarify is, is that those three spaces can be provided with on-street parking, provided they can meet a couple of conditions. And those conditions are um, that whatever is required, would otherwise be required for off-street parking can be provided on-street um, on the same side of the street and adjacent to the property. So they can't say, well, two blocks away there's an on-street parking space. They have to show that it's in front of their property um, on the same side of the street. And then it also would require that, there, uh, that those off-street, I'm sorry, those on-street parking spaces not be used for something that's going to be overnight. Um, in other words, you know, the, the, it can't be something that's going to create the need for somebody to park overnight. That's going to be the case for whatever reason. So those are the basic two conditions in the proposal. Um, you know, Greg you know, had a comment that we need to think about adding something there that would talk about how you know, on-street parking is not going to block our close traffic or create some kind of safety issue as well. Firefighters or these sight lines at corners. We'll be like any other block if they're there, they'd be told it is hey, it's fair. I'm just thinking if you have if one individual across the street has a home occupation and is using those three on street parking stalls. Now, somebody across the street is also looking at doing home occupation and wants to use those three. If that creates a, a, a problem for impeding traffic, then obviously the first one that would come would get you know, the, the parking or the use of those parking stalls. But we can't, we can't have a situation where we're going to impede traffic um, by allowing the, the off street or the on street parking. I was telling my father, we have an issue with parking on one side or the other, but we have the whole side 
on the street, no parking? Not necessarily. Um, you know, I'm just thinking some of the streets that we're looking at doing where we've got 32 feet, um, like 3rd Street or even over by the golf course there. If we have, if we allow parking on both sides of the street, that narrows up, up the street. You know, when we're doing our project, we look to see is there garages, is there um, enough off street parking when we design them. But as things change, if you're going to have home occupation on both sides of the street, that could potentially impact, uh, impact the flow of traffic. 36 foot streets. <laughs> <laughs> so on the narrow streets yeah, now, can you park on both sides? You can. If it's, a, if it's not a state aid street, you can. Yeah, but there again, wouldn't that be more of a one, you know, case by case basis? True. Okay. True. But that's what I'm saying. We, we want something in place to be able to address that if that's the case. Whereas if we don't include that, Technically, they would be allowed, and that potentially probably some issues with the flow of traffic. But well, with all these ordinances, I mean, down the road, if we need to change something, we could always amend them, right? If necessary. Tar, can you pick we can uh, we can have our discussion in a little bit here. Oh, uh, I think at this time, uh, <coughs> put it out to the public. And anyone have something to say about this? Yep, I sure do. And everybody in this room that isn't new is aware that I believe that home occupations, Robin Hensel, I know 71st Street Southeast, home occupations should be given. You guys should be really thinking about making it really easy and the same rules that apply to downtown in the home residential area because of our economy, number one because there are many entrepreneurs who can't afford a business downtown and a home. I was in that situation in 94 when I lived here, when I moved here rather. If I hadn't been able to live downtown, I would not have been able to successfully to open and operate my store for 68 years in downtown. That's a fact. But I have an issue with how this committee and how council was dealing with the rules. This was a, a an illegal hotel, motel, in a residential district for years. Walters never had a permit to operate this. Never. Not a sign permit, not, an operate, not a way to operate this business at all. No. My concern is twofold. Um, and, and this committee has given extension after extension, exception after exception to this business, and I think that's wrong. You treat certain people one way or another, another area of the, if you're like, and if you're not, you're treated differently. I sat in on a, in a court situation for another gal who didn't have a conditional use permit, did not have the off-street parking, and she got a ticket and got a year of probation for it. I was there, seated next to her. That's just wrong. Jeremy, you have said in earlier meetings that I have recorded before I long came into this picture, why does the city pick and choose? Why do we adjust our rules let's, for certain ones? Let's stick to the top. Your current this Waller bed and breakfast has never been in compliance with just alone the bed, the beds that are rented there. They have six rooms, okay? They don't have six places, six parking spaces on their property to accommodate six guests. They never have. You can look at these pictures. I'm happy to pass them out. These are current from just a couple days ago. These are from 2014, the year they were supposed to come into compliance with their off-street parking, and they never have. There is no way that they could park more than three, four cars max in the in the places, in the tarred area here. They'd have to be parking on their grass. Now, if they want to do that, I guess that's up to them. But they don't have a lot of parking spaces at all over there. Um, and then there's the issue of, like, your planning public works director said, you've got a lot of smaller streets, a lot of them over at 8th Street Northwest. What are you going to do? Are you going to make an exception for Wallers, but not somebody in another little home area on a narrower street? Because if you're considering doing that, bending your ordinance again, or making exceptions, shame on all of you. It's illegal what you're suggesting, and someone's going to sue. And it won't be me, likely. Okay. 
Uh, we'll have a discussion here in a little bit. Uh, anyone else? Hearing none, this public hearing closes at 7 o'clock. Now I entertain a motion. I make a motion to accept these changes to as proposed, I guess, would be the easiest way to say it. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. We'll have a discussion. Uh, I'll say one thing is, how many extensions were given? Uh, one since I've been here. That's what I was thinking. It hasn't been many, it's been one. No, we're in here do I see Walter's house mentioned at all. Yeah. Why, and, why uh, am I signaling out one, one Anyway, person? uh, and, uh, the second thing is we're not a governing body here. We don't, we make recommendations. So whatever transpires after this, that's between the council and uh, all we can do is make our best attempt at making a reasonable decision and recommending them. So, so I'm not gonna take a whole lot of content and a few items that were mentioned here. But, uh, I am kind of concerned about if you do have a narrow street, there is a home occupancy right across. Is there a way on a narrower street we can say there can only be one, whoever applies first, uh, can use the street as, like, you know, a uh, street parking to run their business and not make trouble where somebody might open up something directly across the road, then we're, we're causing something to happen. Sure, but I think that's where the does not impede the traffic flow is kind okay. of into, into play. Um, you know, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ben or, or John, but if, if somebody applies for it, you know, on, on those narrower streets and, and is approved, you know, the next person to come here to down the road and wants to be on the other side of the street, at that point, then we'd start looking at there would be an impedance of, of traffic flow. Um, so we wouldn't necessarily be able to grant that because there's already one on the other side of the street. Now, on the same token, we don't know what's gonna happen a year down the road, two years down the road, uh, with technology changing, you just, you just never know what's, what's gonna occur. So um, I think we'll be covered if we say, like if we had number three that says it, it does not impede the traffic flow on the street. So how, how is that any different than I park my car in front of my house and now my neighbor can't park his car there because the road is narrow? To me, it's the same deal. It, so I parked in the street first, you can't park there today because I parked here now? Well, if you have two businesses across the road and they're each right. taking up five spots, there's then a it becomes an impeding thing or... You can only use three spots. There's, there's a difference between residential use and, and commercial use. Um, you know, Commercial or a home occupation is going to be bringing more business to their to their home. They're going to be increasing the traffic flow to it most likely. Um, when we look at these narrower streets, we look to see what people have for off street parking. They've got garages, driveways, that type of stuff. Before we look at putting in the narrower streets. Um, so in, in that case, if you wanted to park on the, on the street, you definitely could. But when people have a garage and they have a driveway, they most likely want to park in their own driveway. It's not so far to, to walk. It's not in the rain, not in the snow, that type of thing. So the, the, the likelihood that somebody's going to have a driveway, have a garage, and want to park on the street, on both cases across the street from each other, it's not very likely. I want to make sure one thing is clear on this too. We're not saying that the guests or the customers of these businesses have to park in those spaces in the rain. But, I mean, they might be already taken up with public parking. Somebody already are, are, are be parked there. The idea here was to say, we want to make sure that you at least have that opportunity for people to park in front of your business, but they, they might park a block away if the spaces aren't available or if they like to walk or whatever it is. And we can't control where people park as long as there are no parking spaces. It would be the same thing as a downtown business. If the street, if the parking, you know, the street in front of the business is full, yeah, you're going to park around the block or two blocks away, whatever you have to do, you know, to get to that business. But this would at least give you an option to say you can do it. 
So, for instance, I mean, if somebody had a 50 foot wide lot in the middle of the block and they wanted, you know, this additional food service, and they were going to argue that, well, you know, I provided my three or four spaces for my rooms and my place off site, but I have no room for any others, that might not be a good candidate for additional food service because they know about it and it's going to create an additional need for, for parking. And, may or may not grant it based on that basis. But this is basically saying if you, can, if you can show that you have the spaces in front of your property, if you have a corner lot, you're going to have a bed and you have more parking in front of you. Then we will allow for your additional food service parking needs to be served by that property. But if you can't meet that need, then you always have the option of providing an off street additional food service. But it's an attempt to say, you know, we've got to be cognizant of what the parking needs are going to be created from this, whether it's going to impact everything. Uh, Chairman, so, uh, Greg, what you're saying is you'd like to see language in here uh, addressing uh, impeded parking? True. So that, you know, some of the conditions that we have listed out here, we've got number one and number two. Um, Provided that number one, the equivalent amount of on street parking spaces as would be otherwise required for off street. Number two, that the secondary use would not create a need for overnight parking. And number three, uh, on street parking does not impede traffic flow. That would be my, my recommendation. Makes sense. You can add that tonight. Well, the person that made the motion and second the motion would have to change it. Right. Or if you could rescind your motion. Well, how about if we would hear the language? How, where would you, where would you have this inserted? Right Where's at the again? very, very end. end. Page three or three at the very end. Page three? Yep. Public hearing number three dash three. So on your right hand side up at the very top. Oh, okay, so we would have an additional line up there? Yeah, have number three there, as we say, on street parking does not impede traffic. Provided, is it, would, it, would it say provided that yeah. on street parking? Did I make a motion? So, Greg, you're talking about where people are actually parked? Yes. This is, okay. this is like a traffic enforcement. I was, I was going to ask if that could be regulated in a, at a later time by the council or police and recommendations. If you are seeing that you have two businesses that utilize uh, on street parking adjacent to their home occupations, then um, if that was impeding flow, then you could regulate at a later time the once no parking on one side of the street. But we're allowing, we're allowing by additional use for home occupation the number of on street parking stalls. That's wow. where that's where I'm thinking we want to address some of that in here and what's about what's counted towards their parking as opposed to what's not. So it would give the city a way to say or the planning commission for a hearing to say either yes you're, you're, you're arguing that this on street parking space is going to meet this need or we're going to say no that's going to be traffic flow correct. Thank you that park So we need an amendment to uh Did I make a motion? The motion that, uh, yes, yes you did. Okay, I'll make a motion that we amend it as we just talked about, provided that the on street parking does not impede traffic. So it'd be I don't know if that'd be another would they be a separate letter? I'm not sure how you're tracking here all under the, four. Uh, three. Be number three. Oh, okay. Go on the whole okay. Yeah, okay, because this begins as number number two is requirements, and then number three would be this. Yep. Okay. I'll make a motion to that effect. I'll second. Who's the second? I. Okay. Do we probably need to have Jeremy. Oh, he has to. Jeremy needs to approve the amendment because he seconded the original motion. No, I don't know. No. That's it. Yeah. So then I think so. Then we would either vote on the original motion or. 
Keep it as is with uh, not the addition of uh, including traffic added. Okay, with no further. Mr. President, may I make a comment, please? Uh, not no. Uh, this is between. With no further uh, discussion, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. No, may I make a comment, please? Uh, let's see. It's not going to really matter. What I'd probably do is save your comment to uh, the city council when it's brought up, you know. I want to correct an inaccurate statement made by this group. This is a recommending body. Uh, you can say it's inaccurate when, you, uh, when it's presented to the council and we'll move from there. If we are wrong, you know, the council will hear it, or if it's not accurate. Well, the Waller House has not been in compliance from 12, 2013 when the conditional We're not use was here granted. Until 2014. This they no don't have the off street we are parking required. Uh, any uh, bed and breakfast or any uh, home occupation business, that's what this is doing. The Waller House has nothing to do with what we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. It might affect the Waller House if the plan, if uh, City Council goes ahead and denies it or accepts it, but that's up to them. We're just discussing how we're going to deal with this parking here for street parking when it comes to home occupancy. So uh, that's over. Let's move on. Uh, any old business you want to discuss now? It says uh, work plan for future ordinance dates. Now, is this something you would ask that we uh, discuss in terms of uh, getting the rest of the ordinance? So, you know, we've had some internal discussions about that. And I think there's one section um, that came up last time we talked about the plan unit bill. Areas where that could be fixed and clarified. And so I think that was an area that we thought could be prioritized. Um, short of that, you know, so much of the rest of the ordinance, we've kind of gone off and picked a few things here and there, places, and a couple things we dealt with tonight. But, um, we're getting to a point where the rest of it is kind of going to have to be dealt with at this time. I think to make sure that we're being consistent. There's probably going to be some exceptions in there if you feel like there's something we should. We did bring up a while back about having these uh, small homes. Maybe, maybe that's an item we can visit. Uh, seems like we kind of got into it, but never really did anything with it. So maybe I think we'll wait to hear what was what was what else was out there. Yeah, we need a little more information on. And I do have those those numbers. I got only last week. So that's something that in the future here, in the soon future, near future, maybe we should bring that up again. I think that's going to be a pretty. It's going to take. It's going to take a while to do that. So we need to get that process started and start looking at. And then a long time things. ago, we were discussing light issues and stuff, and really never came to any resolve on that either. That might have even been before Ben's time. Yeah, I don't know that. Yeah. We, it was a big issue, and uh, then we, other things came up, and it just kind of ended up sitting back there. So, I mean, that's something you may want to look at. Just the in general. How we go about enforcing it was probably the big. Yeah, and, and definitions. The oh, definition of what it is. Uh, I remember Randy Fossum was here, and this peeling paint on the house blight or not, just for example, you know, things like that. And then infringing on people's own privacy and, and rights to, uh, if it's not causing harm or anything, uh, we have a right to enforce what color a person paints their house or if the trim's peeling a little bit. Or, well, you know. we did recently pass that property maintenance code, both okay. the rental and the, the property maintenance code that addresses peeling paint. Okay. Um, so 
some of that might be taken taken uh, taken care of in that ordinance. But we'll, we'll look just at make sure the blight thing is we're done with it. We won't have to look at it. And move on to something else. Okay. So that should be a pretty good laundry list of projects for you. Yeah. <laughs> In case you get bored sometimes. Yeah. Any, any uh, anything else that's been before my time that you were talking about? Oh boy. <laughs> Some of these are. Chapter 11 was a big one at one time, but that seems to be kind of falling into place. You know, a lot of Chapter 11 has been discussed and taken care of, so. Uh, it's coming. Yeah. So when, when I say that, you know, things kind of need to be handled all at once, in some ways, I'm, an example of what I'm thinking of there is when you start talking about one zoning district and the rules that apply, you kind of got to look at all the zoning districts and talk about setbacks and, you know, lot sizes and all those kinds of things all at once. Well, so we're talking about getting away from that step zoning, too, and I don't know. Yeah, and that step zoning, I think, to me, fits in with that, too, because once you start talking about what you're going to allow in each district, right? sort of impacts what the setbacks are going to be on that size of the crazy to me, somebody can take and build a house in the middle of an industrial park if they want to. Yeah. It's all more as long as that. So I know that was something that was raised early on when I first started here. So, you know, it, there's probably some other things in there. I mean, once you start going through the areas that talk about performance standards for specific kinds of uses, so mobile home parks or stored ponds, can always kind of take those somewhat separately, but if there's nothing urgent in your mind with those, I guess I would tend to want to prioritize getting into the zone districts and the steps only. Things that's fresh on my mind, and we just went through uh, St. Francis uh, vacating certain areas. Uh, are there any other places in town that are just sitting there where you don't foresee? And we're going to need them for utility right away, or maybe clean them all up. And Not that I'm aware of it. I'll be honest, I wasn't even aware of this Richardson addition portion uh, until they brought the fact that it wasn't wasn't clear in the vacation back in 1916. Um, it was a long time. Yeah, I mean, it's almost 100 years ago. Um, but the plaque had basically been vacated as well. Uh, whatever reason, those chunks segments were not vacated at, at the time. So, not that I'm aware of that we have right away hanging out there that needs to be uh, needs to be updated. I, like I said I wasn't aware of this one until until they, they mentioned it. I can't think of anything else. I'm sure we get into those and we'll find a whole bunch more. So, yeah. There, It'll be a process, and we'll go through it. And if we can't get part way through it, something jumps up, we can always reprioritize. No, one thing with Tango is too that Paul Rick is already dead, so I'll bring digging our man in there too. Yeah, that kind of falls in with you know, what are we going to allow in each district? Sure. So we set that up. We've got the rest of part of that. There was something brought up at the council, I can't remember what it was, but it was an item that was probably supposed to be forwarded, probably went to made this agenda, is that something we're going to look at at the next one? Do you remember the last meeting? I mean, in terms of uh, discharge of firearms? Yeah. I don't know if the council necessarily gave clear direction on whether or not they wanted us to do that or not. They were planning to do that. Okay. So we'll have to wait on that one. Okay. Okay. Business. None. Our next regular meeting is going to be Monday, November 9th. There was a little discussion that might be a bad day because of uh, deer hunting. <laughs> is there, uh, how's it look for the, the committee here as far as showing up that day? Is there anyone going to make it or? Not an issue for me. <coughs> It'll be an issue for me. It could be an issue. Jeremy might be I don't know. I have. I have been Chicago on Tuesday morning. I hope I make it on there this morning. Um, we should still be all right. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah. If Carol makes it. We'll just have to make sure that we take special attention to contact all the members to make sure we have a quorum. Uh, 
Ray promised me I could lend you Saturday, so I'll be back Monday. Right. 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 We're good. Give it a few weeks. No further business. Uh, I think we're going to adjourn the meeting. I'll make time. a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Okay, it carries.